Novena in honor of St. Peter Nolasco. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening Prayer O glorious Father, St. Peter Nolasco, faithful messenger of the Most Holy Trinity, beloved Son of our Mother of Mercy, and founder of the Mercedarian family, we beg you that God may grant us the grace to imitate your ardent love for God and neighbor, to persevere in the fulfillment of the commandments of God, and to defend and nourish the faith in Christ by working for his kingdom. Obtain for us a greater love for the church, especially for her persecuted sons and daughters. Beloved Father, intercede for us that we may be free from the dangers of the world, attain eternal life, and glorify God forever. Amen. Our salutations. We bless you, most holy Trinity, because you called Peter Nolasco and made him messenger, agent, and founder of this family of redeemers. We praise you for all your wonders. We praise you, most holy Trinity, because you showed your loving will to console and to free afflicted captives through the Virgin Mary. We thank you for all your wonders. We adore you, most holy Trinity, because you graced your servant, Peter Nolasco, with your great love in the work of redemption. We thank you for all your wonders. Third day, Servant of the Church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit. For the body does not consider of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the organs in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single organ, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body which seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those parts of the body which we think less honorable, we invest with the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our most presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior part, that there may be no discord in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. 
And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, then healers, helpers, administrators, speakers in various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 24 to 40. A dispute also arose among them, which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For which is the greater, one who sits at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who sits at table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have continued with me in my trials. As my Father appointed a kingdom for me, so do I appoint for you, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brethren. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. He said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you three times deny that you know me. And he said to them, When I sent you out with no purse or bag or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, Nothing. He said to them, But now, let him who has a purse take it, and likewise a bag. And let him who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was reckoned with transgressors, for what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Reflection St. Peter Nolasco served the church with great love and complete dedication. His main concern was to bring relief to the oppressed and liberty to Christians in captivity. As a young merchant, he often came in direct contact with the Christian captives who were subjected to all types of torture because of their faith in Christ. Peter was moved to pity by such sad conditions and sold all of his possessions to procure their freedom. He invited other young men to join him in the work of redemption, and with them 
He went throughout Spain, collecting alms and goods for the redemption of the captives. He had to bear many hardships and overcome numerous obstacles in this task. Peter was often subjected to humiliation, refusal, and even ridicule. His very life was in danger on more than one occasion. Nonetheless, he persevered in his difficult task because he was convinced that Christ was suffering in every suffering Christian. Whatsoever you do to the least of these, you do it to me. Inspired by the Blessed Virgin Mary, Peter Nolasco founded the Order of Mercy for the Redemption of Captives. During all of his life, Peter Nolasco loved and served the church by serving and spending himself for her most needy and afflicted children. He lived and acted always in conformity to the words of Jesus. He who wishes to be my disciple must serve the rest. Resolutions To pray in common and in private for persecuted Christians. To perform a work of mercy. Prayers of the Faithful Let us call on Christ, who was born, died, and rose for us, and say to him with faith and trust, Lord, save the people you have redeemed by your blood. Lord, you gave your life for us dying on the cross. Watch over the church, redeemed by your sacrifice. Lord, save the people you have redeemed by your blood. Lord, you call men and women to follow you more closely. Grant numerous vocations to our mercedarian family. Lord, save the people you have redeemed by your blood. Lord, look upon us with mercy. Never permit us to stray from the way leading to eternal life. Lord, save the people you have redeemed by your blood. Lord, you intimately united the Virgin Mary to the work of redemption. Grant that we may imitate her faith, hope, and love. Lord, save the people you have redeemed by your blood. Lord, we pray that we may be faithful to our consecration, never ceasing to proclaim your gospel or to be concerned for the poor and needy. Lord, save the people you have redeemed by your blood for our own particular intentions. Lord, save the people you have redeemed by your blood. Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayers and present them to your heavenly Father. Infuse in us your consoling spirit and the grace to persevere in our service for your honor and glory. We ask this in your name. Amen. Concluding Prayer Father of the Mercedarian Family, hear our prayer and obtain for us from the Lord what we ask Him through your intercession. Lover of Mary, teach us to discover in her the perfect model for everyone redeemed through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Teach us to love her with true filial love by imitating her virtues. Lover of the Church, help us to be faithful to her. Support us if we should fall, and strengthen us if we should become discouraged. Father of the Mercedarian family, increase the number of those who wish to follow you in the generous service of redeeming love. 
so that every person may come to know the immense love of God for all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.